All right, welcome back everyone. So hey, for this particular video lesson, we're just gonna go straight to the assignment. Instead of doing um, different examples, we're just gonna um, do problems right off the homework. Um, let's start with question one. So again, this is uh, the goal is to solve exponential systems. So first of all, we're gonna do a review of how to solve a linear system. Companies A, current weekly profit is $28,000. Okay, that's what it starts at. That's kind of the starting profit right now. And it increases by $500 every week. That's called the slope. Okay, this one goes up by a steady amount. This is linear because every week it goes up $500. Okay, company B's current weekly profit is $23,500. That's what it starts at. It increases by $750 every week. That is its slope. So notice we have two different companies here each with their own linear growth. So there's two different linear growths we're comparing. How many weeks until company B's profit catches company A? Well, notice company B is making less money right now. But because it has a higher slope, eventually it's going to catch up because it's gaining more every week. How many weeks is that going to take? Well, let's review how to, how to solve this. It's called a system. So company A, we write out um, the slope is 500. Its starting weekly profit is 28000 Here's how we write this company as a function. Here's the formula for this company. All right, now company B, the slope of it is 750, and it starts at 23500 Now, if you recall, this is called a system. Now, this is linear growth here. Okay, this is linear growth, so this is a linear system. And there's two main ways to solve this, okay? Number one, you could graph this on Desmos, and you'd have to really adjust the window a lot to figure out exactly where it meets, because what's going to happen is you're going to have one line that starts up here and grows by a smaller slope compared to another line that starts down here and grows by a faster slope. If you graph this on Desmos and find the point where they cross, that's your answer. Okay, but we don't have to use Desmos, and I'm going to encourage you to do this by hand. Because there's another way to solve a linear system called the substitution method. And here's what's going to happen. I'm going to remove this y. I'm going to take it away. Okay. I took this y away. I made this y vanish. And I'm going to substitute it or replace it with this expression down here, which is also equal to y, 750x plus 23,500 the substitution method, this in parentheses, takes the place of this y, and now I have this equation that's pretty easy to solve. When I solve this for x, all I have to do is subtract 500x from both sides. That leaves me with 250x, and this is just the difference in their slopes. Then I subtract 23,500 from both sides. Okay, and this leaves me with 4,500. This is just the difference between their starting points, their starting weekly profits, and then I divide both sides by 250. And I think this one comes out pretty nice and clean. 4,500 divided by 250. Yeah, it comes out to 18 weeks. All right, after 18 weeks, company B will catch up. Company B will catch up and then after 18 weeks, it'll actually surpass company A. 18. In Canvas, you just type the 18. You don't type the weeks. It only takes numerical answers. All right, so that's a review of, of linear growth. And I'm not going to make you find the Y value if you wanted to know. So this is, you know, this is $28,000. This is $23,500. If you want to find out what their profit is at this point after 18 weeks, um, here's how you would do it. You could pick either one of these. Okay, if you were curious or if the question ever asked, you could take the 18, plug it back into one of your original formulas, and if you were curious or if the question ever did decide to ask, at this point they're both making $37,000 of profit a week at that point. Okay, that's how we would go back and solve for Y. This particular question we didn't need to though. It just wanted the X value, the 18 weeks. Okay. Now, so this is a review. We, we've done problems like question one back in like unit two, I believe, in previous units, I should say. 
Okay, so what about question two? What if we have exponential growth? And this is much, this is much harder, but I'm going to show you how to do it. Company C's current weekly profit is $82,000. Every week, this company makes eighty two grand. Now, it, it doesn't increase by a slope. It increases by a percentage every week. That is called R. All right, company D, it makes $68,000 a week. And it is increasing. Oh, these are backwards. Hold up. That should be a five. I'm going to change this on Canvas. It's incorrect right now. This should be a five. This should be a seven. Yep, I'm glad I saw that. I, I'll know to go change that on uh, Canvas now. Okay, so here, this company, uh, company D, makes 68000 to start, and it earns 7% every week. Okay, so we can write this now as a system. Company C starts 82,000. It grows by 5% every week. So it's going to look like this. And we've been practicing how to write these formulas. So that hopefully that comes, that should be easy to you at this point. Company D starts at 68,000. It grows by 7%. Now, likewise, we could graph these on Desmos, right? You can have one company that starts up here, another company that starts down here. This company is going to have a slow curve because it's 5%. This company is going to have a faster curve because it's 7%. Right here would be the number of weeks it takes to catch up. But we're going to do this without, um, we're going to do this without graphing it on Desmos using kind of the same idea. We're going to set these two... Um, we're going to substitute this 82,000 times 1.05 to the x and set it equal to 68,000 times 1.07 to the x. All right, now here's where it gets fun. Now this is a unique equation. We've never tried an equation like this before. Here we don't just have one x. Uh, you know, we don't have just a single uh, variable that's a power. We don't just have one x that's a power. We also have another x that's also a power. And this is going to be a little bit trickier to solve, but here's how we do it. We're going to take the log of both sides. I'm going to take the log of all of this, and I switched to a red pen to kind of hopefully make this pop a little bit better on the screen. And over here, I'm going to take the log of the entire right-hand side of the equation. Okay, I'm just using common log here. Now, there's this property of logs called the product rule. And you can go back and review it from one of the previous lessons, but the product rule, just to put it real, just a quick review here. If you ever have the log of like m times n, it can be rewritten as log of m plus the log of n. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do here. Um, since these two things are being multiplied together, I can now write the log of 82,000 plus the log of 1.05 to the x. Furthermore, because of what's called the power rule, I can now take this power of x and basically bring it to the front here. And I wrote ahead here, this power rule allows us to take this power of x. If we take the log of this, it allows us to take the power of x and whoop, kind of bring it back down to ground level, we can rewrite this as x times the log of 1.05. And so over here, it's the exact same thing. We can write this as log of 68,000 plus the log of 1.07 to the x. We can do this because of the product rule. But then because of the power rule, we can now take this x, bring it in front of the log, like this. So at this point, now we kind of have these x terms here that we'll want to combine together. And we also have these constant terms that we want to combine together. I'm going to, I'm going to combine this first. I'm going to take, I can now take this log of 68,000 and subtract it over to the left. Now there's one last property of logs that we're going to use here. The last property of logs we're going to use here is called the quotient rule. And the quotient rule says this. It says if you have the log of m divided by n, 
you can actually rewrite that as log of m minus the log of n and vice versa. So what that means is when we subtract these two logs, we can write it as log of 82,000 divided by 68,000. Okay, when you subtract these two logs, we can, using the quotient rule, we can now write it like this. Likewise, I'm going to subtract this x times the log of 1.05 from both sides. And over here on the right, we're going to have x times the log of 1.07 divided by 1.05. Okay, so my last step then to solve for x, I'm going to divide this log of 1.07 over 1.05 from both sides. So this is my final step. I need to find some way to divide all of this divided by all of this, and this gives me the answer. All right, we can do this. This doesn't look too bad. Log of 82,000 divided by 68,000. And you know, I'm gonna go ahead and hit equal there and kind of get this as a decimal. Now I'm gonna divide that answer by the log of 1.07 divided by 1.05. And voila, final answer to the nearest thousandth, 9.922. It's gonna take about 9.922 weeks for company D to catch up to company C. I'll write this in the box, 9.922. Don't write the word week, weeks, just write the number rounds the nearest thousandth. That's how we do question two. That's also how you'll do um, the remainder of the questions, I believe, are, are going to be exponential growth. So best of luck on this assignment. Take care.